What's going on guys, it is Murdering here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to be talking about what everyone's been patiently waiting for, the part 2 of what to sell. We're going to be focusing on your weapon, your helmet, shield, gloves, chest, and finally boots. Now this is a question that everybody asks all the time. Murder, how do you know what you need to sell, what you don't need to sell? I'm someone that spent over 100,000 energy in each individual dungeon. I can sell gear very quickly. So I'm going to give you all of the information that you all need to be able to sell things as quickly as I am and making sure you're keeping the proper pieces so you can gear your champion successfully. There's going to be a ton of information here, so let's get right into it, not waste too much time, and make sure you guys are absorbing as much of this information as possible. So what's going to be step one in this process? Look at your champions always. Make sure you know who you have. It's not a bad idea to keep a side sheet if you're willing to put it in the work. This is something that I'm kind of bad at doing. I don't do this. I should do this because every single champion is going to need specific gear. And with this new fitting room thing, you can pre-build gear sets. You can say, okay, I really need an upgrade here. This is the piece I'm looking for. Just have it in the back of your head. Or like I said, have it in a notepad somewhere. And as you're getting pieces, you're going to know right away, this is the exact piece I need. You can roll it. Even if you don't roll it, sometimes you'll just know if it's the right piece or that champion. It's going to help you out so much in this process. The main goal here is to make sure you guys have more silver in your pocket. Yes, silver is a big issue in the game, but you can definitely help yourself and alleviate some of that pressure by not hoarding all of this gear and you're not really sure which to sell, which not to sell because as soon as you sell it, it is in fact gone forever. This is definitely a valid stance for you guys to take. However, hopefully after this information, you're going to be a lot better off and what you're going to keep and what you're actually going to sell. So after you did go through that step one of knowing what your champions need, know which sets are going to be very niche to your champions. Something like if you have a Hegemon, for example, or AOE champions that you need the utility of CC, make sure you're noting about stun sets, day sets to sleep to champions, or if you're running an unkillable and you do need something like a Fury set or a toxic set for those additional poisons on the clan boss. This is very important to keep in mind because if you don't need any of those things, those sets outside of the point I'm going to talk about next can pretty much be sold instantly. Now another thing to also consider is if you have a champion like Rush the Mangler that you're actively using or Battle, the value of lifesteal gear is going to plummet all the way down. Personally for myself, I don't keep any more lifesteal gear because there's nothing I can actually do with lifesteal gear. So after you've kind of formulated what sets you need, what sets you don't need, you're going to be in a very good path and a much better starting point than you would be at when you proceed to selling your gear after you do have a farming session. Now this is going to bring us to our next point. We're going to be talking about broken sets. How do I determine what sets to keep if they are in fact a broken set? Now as I'm going over each individual slot, there's going to be like a best in slot for what the stats are going to be. This is something you can elect to save for a broken set. I'm going to go over them all. So it's going to be pretty easy for you to kind of pinpoint them down since they are very familiar. But what I really want to talk about is speed rules. Everyone knows unless you're pushing for platinum, speed is king and even a little bit in platinum, but not as much, but we're not gonna talk about the arena right now. So in most parts of this game, you always want a very fast speed champion, and sometimes it's very depressing or annoying to just farm dragon all the time. Hope for that triple roll speed gear, quad roll speed gear. Your chances of getting a triple roll or a quad roll are much higher if you just keep all of the gear you get. So this is what my recommendations to you guys are going to be to make sure you're not spending too much silver rolling gear up, but you're not saving too many pieces gear in the process so i would recommend look at where you are in the game determine whether you're going to be saving five star or six star gear once you've picked the five star or six star gear only keep epic or legendary pieces for any single set in the game as long as they have a speed roll visible on them now if you don't know this already six is going to be the high end or six star gear and five is going to be the low end so that's something to keep in mind as far as if you wanted to add an additional metric to what kind of speed rolls you are going to be rolling up after that fact what i always do is i roll it to four if it doesn't hit speed on four i sell it to me personally it's not worth the silver this is coming from someone who has over a billion silver on their account if you don't hit speed on that first four roll on an epic or legendary piece just sell it right away don't bait yourself into getting a double roll from 
plus eight, plus 12, and spending millions of silver just to hit plus 16 for you not to get that speed roll, where that specific speed set of a double roll, which is much more common than a quad roll, would have helped you out overall. This is going to save you a ton of silver. It's going to alleviate a lot of the hoarding people do for speed gear all the time. So I highly recommend following that metric. This brings us to our next point where we're going to be talking about once you've picked that certain set, you've determined that you do need this set, let's talk about the weapon slot. What are you going to be looking at for a weapon slot? Now the perfect weapon slot for a damage dealing champion is going to have the substats of attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, and then finally speed. It doesn't necessarily matter how many rolls you get into each one, that's going to determine based on the overall build at the end, but those are the four best in slot stats or that for a damage dealing champion. Now, if you don't have a damage dealing champion, you're going to want something like HP percent, flat HP, speed, accuracy, or resistance. Now resistance, a lot of people aren't going to be building resistance builds unless you need something very specific like an off affinity spider tank, so on and so forth. However, I did feel like it was worth mentioning there. So one thing I do want to clarify, don't ever sell something because it has a flat stat on it. Flat stats are going to be beneficial to you is there's only a certain amount of stats you're actually going to need. So if you have a champion, you really want to maximize their survivability. Having HP percent and flat HP is going to be much better than having HP percent, speed, accuracy, and resistance. Those are just facts. There's no way to get around them. Yes, it could be bad if you did roll a double flat HP roll. However, it's literally better than having resistance on that weapon piece so don't ever just sell something because you see a flat stat it's just not logical if you think about it for more than five seconds but with that being said in the second iteration of that build obviously if you have a debuffer you do want to focus more on accuracy than the hp flat hp or speed and if you have a speed champion obviously you want to focus more on the speed but after seeing these perfect pieces once you see two visible rolls, based on what I've just shown you for the weapon, you should then be able to decide if it's worth it for you to keep it and see what you actually get on the plus 12 and plus 16 roll based on what the first plus 4 or plus 8 roll actually was on that weapon for you. The next slot we're going to be talking about is going to be the helmet here. This is where you really want to focus on the main stat for your champion, whether it's attack percent, defense percent, or HP percent. Once you get that main stat, the perfect follow-up stat that's going to be for a champion that's really focused on doing damage is going to be crit rate, crit damage, and speed. So if it's an attack-based champion, it's going to be attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, and then speed. If it's defense percent, you just swap the attack percent for defense, and the same applies to HP percent. The second option for a perfect helmet is going to be HP percent, defense percent, accuracy, and then finally speed. Now one thing to note is you can never have enough crit rate, you can never have enough speed. Because like I said, as good as it is to give you a guideline on what specific substats you are going to be looking for on these pieces, nothing's going to make sense unless you have an entire gear set on a champion making sure that they fit for whatever purpose you have in progression. This is going to be another situation where if you have HP percent, defense percent, flat defense and crit rate, it's still going to be a decent piece to keep even if you roll once into flat defense. Like I mentioned before, you could have gotten accuracy or resistance in that spot instead, and maybe this specific piece is going to be on someone that doesn't require any accuracy at all, so it's much better for you to have this flat stat that people are kind of tossing to the side instead of that flat defense that's actually going to benefit the survivability of that champion. The next stat we're going to be talking about is the shield. This one's very easy. For a damage dealing champion, all you're going to be worried about is crit rate, crit damage, and then finally speed. You cannot get attack percent on the shield. So those are the three stats you're really going to be focused on. And as we know from our previous video, HP percent has a much higher yield as far as survivability than defense actually is going to allow as long as you're keeping things relatively tame and balanced in between the stats. Now, if you are gearing a pure survivability champion, you're going to want HP percent, defense percent, flat HP, speed, and finally accuracy. However, you can weave them in. And once again, you don't want to only be keeping pieces with speed and accuracy because sometimes you don't need as much of those stats where if you do get a double roll of HP percent right off the bat, it's still going to be a good piece to actually keep. Like I've already mentioned three times before, I promise I won't say it again. Gear only makes sense once you have a full set on a champion. 
being a little bit late on HP percent or defense percent can really come together if you use things like an immortal set, a life set, a defense set, using those set bonuses to your advantage to kind of fill in the gaps of the stats you are in fact missing. The next thing we're going to talk about are gloves. Now gloves are going to be rather unique here. This is the first time we have a main set that we're dealing with. So the first thing I do want to cover is anything with speed, always roll it to four. This kind of goes to the broken set thing. Roll it to four if it's epic or legendary. If it doesn't hit speed, then you can determine if you want to move on. If it is a specific speed set, I would recommend maybe going to plus eight, depending on it being epic or legendary, just in case you can get that double roll. Obviously, a double roll in a speed set is going to be much better than a double roll in a non-speed set. However, it is a little bit different for gloves because not only are you going to be looking for speed, also, you're going to find as you get later into the game, speed and accuracy are going to play a huge role. So any main stat with speed and accuracy, I would roll it to eight right off the bat, just so you can get a decent amount of gloves with a solid balance between accuracy and speed. When I see any main stat, I literally mean flat attack, flat HP, flat defense, or any of the defense percents, crit rates, or crit damage. Because when you have a champion that's going to be your debuffer and when you have a champion that's going to be a fast champion, it literally doesn't matter what's on their gloves. Flat HP is going to be fine for survivability for literally any content you can think of, including Platinum Arena. I have champions that I use in Platinum Arena with flat stats on their glove, but they have triple speed rolls, double speed roll, double accuracy roll. Don't just sell things because the stats are flat. I think it's the stupidest thing anyone could ever say because of how strong substats actually are in this game. So outside of the accuracy and speed part of the gloves, Crit damage gloves with crit rate are one of the hardest things to get in this game and it really moves you onto that end game stage. So if this is going to be a damage dealing champion, your perfect set of gloves are going to be crit damage with a substat roll of crit rate, attack, defense, or HP depending on the type of champion it is, and then finally speed. That last slot is really going to determine what kind of champion it is. It can either be a flat stat of whatever your champion's role is being attack, defense, or HP, or it can be accuracy if it does in fact require accuracy for whatever kind of content you are in fact doing. The next best gloves are going to actually be the reverse of what we just explained. It's going to be crit rate gloves with the subset of crit damage, attack percent, defense percent, HP percent, and then finally speed, accuracy, whatever else you actually need in that slot. Then we're going to move on to the like survivability champions where you want the main stat, which is going to be attack, defense, or HP. And then finally, you're going to fill that up with crit rate, crit damage, speed, and then once again, that flat stat or accuracy if you do in fact need to debuff with that champion. Now, the only kind of anomaly here is going to be shield set champions. Now, if you're looking for a shield set champion, they're very common in the arena, they're very strong, they're very common in progression, and the Doom Tower. There's a lot of shield sets in the Doom Tower because of how strong they actually are. For that, you're going to want HP percent and as many rolls in flat HP as you possibly can, making sure you have the biggest shield for your team that will reset after each and every single stage of content that you are in fact doing. The next thing we're going to talk about here is going to be the chest piece, and as you can all assume, accuracy with speed and then whatever mains that you have being attack defense or hp really heavy emphasis on the speed there double rolls triple rolls are absolutely fantastic however don't find yourself keeping too many accuracy especially if there's no speed there once you get more to the end game you'll never need an accuracy chest piece and an accuracy banner on the same champion simply because of your great haul and the very small accuracy requirements outside of the doom tower that you actually will find in the late to end game for this game here outside of the accuracy chest piece you can keep a few resistance chest pieces in case you do find yourself wanting a resistance champion like i've mentioned a few times before resistance champions are very hard to build because usually when you're stacking resistance you're really struggling building survivability and enough speed to actually make that resistance worth it for the champion so we're kind of going to skip that momentarily i would recommend following the same path pattern of accuracy where resistance you want as much speed on the chest as possible then follow it by the main stat if you can spare another stat and something you're looking for however what i really want to talk about is the main stat chest piece being attack percent hp percent or defense percent and the best substats for this is going to directly impact what gloves you have on the champion 
if you have a ton of crit rate gloves, you're going to be looking for chest pieces with a lot of crit damage as the substat. If you have a lot of crit damage gloves with crit rate substats, you're going to be looking for a main stat chest piece with a lot of crit rate substats. Outside of crit rate or crit damage based on the gloves, obviously speed is going to be the number one choice. This is more along the lines of a damage dealing champion than actually a progression based champion. If you were looking for a progression based champion, I would highly recommend any main stat and then solely focus on speed. Use the chest piece as a point to boost your speed because spider is going to be a pain to get a banner with speed on it with so many different factions and since they are faction specific, so highly recommend getting as much speed as possible on that chest piece of an HP percent, defense percent, or attack percent based on whatever champion you actually need it on. Outside of speed, obviously accuracy is also a great way as a substat to get an ample source of accuracy to make sure you're rounding out that banner and anything you do have from the necklace as well. Now the last slot we are in fact going to be talking about is going to be the boots. Now everyone knows speed boots. What goes best with speed boots? Talking about a damage dealing champion first. This is where you don't really need to look at the type of gloves you have on your account. You always want to make sure for a damage dealing champion, you're aiming for crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent, and then finally flat attack. The perfect pair of speed boots for a damage dealing champion, once again, is going to be crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and flat attack. Those four stats together are going to make the perfect nuke champion or glass cannon champion to clear all of the waves, kill everyone in an arena. Those are the ideal stats you should be looking for. Outside of that, it gets very, very simple for speed boots. You want speed boots with as many accuracy rolls as possible, taking any other substat you can possibly find on it, with the main focus being accuracy for your debuffers. And then finally, you have a more survivability build where it's speed, and you either want to focus on HP percent, defense percent, flat HP, and then finally flat defense. Now, some of the less common and more in game boots are going to be percentage stat boots, meaning HP percent, attack percent, or defense percent. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, if it doesn't at least have a double speed roll, I would not keep it at all. Roll it to plus four if it doesn't hit speed and it cannot hit speed two more times. Definitely weigh your options on whether or not you want to keep it. There are a few exceptions. Most of those exceptions are going to be with attack percent boots where you can get away with just crit rate, just crit damage, and you can pray for a single speed roll at the end because obviously your turn meter boosters are going to be going first. However, if it's going to be HP percent or defense percent, really have to weigh your options carefully because you're going to have to make up a ton of speed, losing up to 45 additional speed for that champion coming from the boot. You're going to be needing a triple roll on the chest piece you're wearing, a triple roll on the shield helmet. It's very hard to kind of put that set together. So you can keep it in the back of your head, but if you're really short on silver, I wouldn't invest too much on holding too many of those items around. All right, guys, that is my overview on what I keep, how I know what to keep, and like I said, even though I did just break down every single slot, all of this comes down to knowing what's on your account. I cannot stress that enough. Never plan ahead. Never say, what if I get this champion eventually? What if I get that champion eventually? Once you get good enough at knowing what's on your account and knowing what stats you need for those champions, you have a good idea on what to keep. So when you do pull a new champion, you say, oh, this champion is just like this other champion that I already have. I've been saving gear for this guy. Some of the upgrades I've gotten for my original champion, the gear I never sold, obviously, because you would never do that. So that gear can then be put onto the new champion. It's just a revolving cycle of all this gear that you used to have on one champion that you can now use for a new champion and you don't have 400, 500, 600 pieces just sitting in your inventory rolled or unrolled with you not knowing what to do. All of that silver you can be actively using if you need it to swap gear, unfortunately, even though it should be free in my opinion. Just to give you an example, I currently have about 300 pieces of gear in my inventory right now. 300 pieces that I just cannot sell because of how good they are. And in my opinion, that's kind of a lot of gear to have on standby. I think there's no realistic reason for anyone to have more than 100 to 200 pieces in their inventory. Definitely leave a comment. Let me know below how many pieces you have hoarded up. And I can tell you right now, if it's more than one, two or 300 pieces, you are definitely saving way too many pieces that you simply don't need. Definitely follow this guide 
roll them as much as I've recommended to roll them. They aren't good. Just say goodbye to it. Trust me, say goodbye. After I released the video for part one about the accessories, so many people said I sold so much gear, I made so much silver, and things were so much easier for me when I did run the spider. Hopefully this helps you guys when you're running Ice Golem, Dragon, and Fire Knight. Getting all of the gear, even when you're rolling gear for the forge, this should give you a much better idea on what stats you should be targeting to kind of fill in the gap of what your champions actually need. All right, guys, as always, give me your feedback on this topic. Let me know if there's anything that I missed that you think that should have been on this list as far as what to sell and what to keep. And don't forget, if you enjoy this content, subscribe, smash that like button, hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload my next video, and I will see you all in my next upload.